everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Debbie Javier. In this video, we will talk about how to effectively communicate in the new normal. This is another teacher's guide. Before I'm going to start with my discussion on the tips on how to effectively communicate in the new normal, please do not forget to click the subscribe button and the bell button for you to be notified every time I have a new video. And if it's not too much to ask, please write down your comments below and give this video a thumbs up. So this topic is just like a continuation of the topic of the recent video that we have just uploaded, which is Surviving Online Class, a Teacher's Guide. This time, I'm going to discuss tips on how to effectively communicate in the new normal. This is also for teachers. So this is another teacher's guide. So what are the things that we need to remember in terms of how to be an effective communicator as a teacher in the new normal? So what are the new normal ways of speaking or communicating? So terms like Google Meet, Canva, Zoom, Screen Share, Screenshot, Synchronous, Asynchronous, Google Meet Extensions, Link, Mute, Unmute, and LMS are some of the terms that we should be familiar with. So this are the new ways of communicating in the new normal. So, number one, of course, before we're going to tackle that one by one, let me just give you some tips on how to effectively communicate now in the new normal. So, when we say new normal in teaching, we do not face our students anymore. We are not with our students in the classroom, but we are now teaching our students simply on the screen using laptops or computers or ga other gadgets. First tip, keep abreast with the new terms in online teaching, just like the ones I have mentioned a while ago. So what are these new terms? Synchronous, asynchronous, Zoom, Google Meet, Google Meet extensions, link, mute, unmute, and so on. So these are the things that we should become familiar with whether we like it or not teachers. So sometimes some teachers are confused whether it's synchronous or asynchronous. Are they muted or unmuted during the discussion? So we have to keep abreast with that. Number two, we have to be able to overcome physical barriers. So what are the physical barriers that we are experiencing now as teachers? Of course, we no longer see our students face to face. So we can only communicate with them using our, of course, earphones or headphones, microphones, we can only communicate with them through our computers. So these are barriers that we should be able to overcome. So what are the things that we should specifically do for us to be able to overcome these physical barriers? Number one, learn to modulate your voice using your microphone. So since we are already using microphone in communicating, we have to be able to learn to modulate your our voice or modulate your voice. That's very important. Of course, it's also very important that before the start of the class, you should check if your microphone is functioning uh, correctly. Second, before you start with your lecture, ask your students if they can hear you clearly or if they can clearly hear you. That's very, very important. You ask them if they can clearly hear you. 2.3. Choose your words carefully. Since we don't have the luxury of time to really speak that very long, remember, in, in the normal classroom, we meet our students, if it's MWF class, we meet them for three hours. That is three hours a week. So we meet them for three hours, but in the online class, for three meetings, we'll only meet them for an hour or for two hours only. So our time is very limited. So we have to choose our words carefully. We should not make very long discussions, very long explanations as much as possible. We have to make it short. Remember, it's difficult to be in an online class for a very long time. So we have to be able to make our lectures as short as possible. The third tip, be fully in the moment when interacting virtually. So 
make sure that you'll be able to give the people at home a signal. Remember, we're working at home. We have to be able to give them a signal that we are already in the classroom. So even if we're just at home, by having our own space at home where we can really teach virtually, then they will already know that they can no longer disturb uh, mommy or daddy. They can no longer disturb you because you are already in the online class. And of course, it's also very important that you also have to wear proper attire so that people in the at home will know and your students will know that you really mean business even if it's in the online class. So be fully in the moment when interacting virtually. Do not do something else. You have to be able to concentrate. So do not, for example, be talking with someone, mute your microphone and be talking with someone during the class time that's very unethical. So it's very important that we have to be able to interact virtually with our students. So I mean to say, if our class is 7.30 to 8.30, we should be in the virtual classroom from 7.30 to 8.30 and the people at home should know that one, for them to minimize their noise, for them also not to disturb you. Fourth, practice being mindful. In what way? So you have to be very, very sensitive with your students, of course, you have to check if they are really there, if they're listening. Choose your words. And then, at this time, everyone is going through certain problems and challenges in life. So, even if it's only done virtually, we have to be mindful with our students. So, of course, we have to be able to check the attendance. We have to be able to let them participate. We also have to give them time to really be in the classroom. That's very, very important. Next, number five, learn to utilize all the possible ways to communicate with your students. So what are these possible ways to communicate with our students? Remember, there are many ways for you to communicate with our, your students this time. Through chat box in the Google Meet or the Zoom. You can also email them. You can also use text message or Messenger. If you have your own LMS, you can also send them messages through their inbox or through their emails. That's also very, very important. Okay? So, so that they will be updated most of the time. And, of course, it's very, very important that they should be able to get all the important messages. That's why it's this number five is also part of practice being mindful because there are students who don't have a very strong signal so they might not be hearing you as clearly as possible as the others or there are instances that they lost internet connection. So sometimes for you, you are very clear but on their end, you are not very clear. You are choppy. Yeah. Number six, make sure to relay clear and concise messages as much as possible. Give them clear and concise instructions or messages. You should not do very long instructions. You should not be giving them long instructions. If you have to do that, make sure that you are going to send them through email or you can post them in your LMS or in the chat box or in Oh, through text message or through their GC, through messenger. Number seven, make your PowerPoint presentations short and simple but easy to understand. Remember, your time is very limited. Okay, Your time for discussion is very limited. Unlike the face-to-face -face class, you really have the luxury of time to make very long discussions. This time, it's very, very important that your presentation should be short and should be simple. Okay, how will you do that? So, for example, lessons that can be discussed in an hour can be made into a simpler presentation through your PowerPoint. So meaning to say, without you doing a lot of explanations with your PowerPoint presentation, the lesson should already be understood by your students. For example, so I'm going to give you some of the PPT that I use in my class. So if your lesson is on tenses of verb, so you can make it this way. First column, the tenses, and then, of course, so, tenses of verb, you have simple tenses, progressive or continuous tenses, perfect tenses, 
perfect progressive tenses. If you show this one to them, they will just read it and it will be very easy for them to understand. And then, how will you be able to discuss these lessons very easily? So, you can do it this way. So, look at my PowerPoint presentation. So, for example, if you will discuss simple past tense, so you just place their past samples of past time expressions and then when to use it, you have to be able to differentiate also regular and irregular verbs, the past tense of regular and irregular verbs. And how to use it, you have there, simple past tense, when to use it, you have there, you have to indicate there when to specifically use it, and then you give them the examples. In this way, you don't really need to make very long discussions or explanations. How about if your lesson is on the active or passive voice? So you have to be able to differentiate active and passive as short as possible. And then give them examples. On one column, you have there uh, the active voice examples and then the passive voice. How to translate them, you should be able to explain that one. Or how to transcribe them or how to change active to passive or passive to active, you'll just explain. And then focus on the tense also. And then, how about if your lesson is on constructing simple questions? So you have here, constructing simple questions made easy. So you just have to give them the steps. So if they can read the steps on their own, it will be very, very easy for you to explain. And then you give them the example. So you have to give here the statement and then the simple question. How are you supposed to do it? So I use arrows, I use colors, color coding. I use shapes just to let them be able to identify that these are the changes that took place and these are the things that I made from statement to simple question. Okay, so those are the tips that I can simply give you in terms of communicating effectively in the new normal. So let's have a recap first. Of course, remember the new normal way of communicating the terms that you need to uh, be able to embrace whether you like it or not. And then, first tip, keep abreast with the new terms in online teaching. Second, overcome physical barriers. Under that, we have 2.1, learn to modulate your voice using your microphone. 2.2, before you start with your lecture, ask your students if they can clearly hear you. 2.3, choose your words carefully. That's very important. And then the third tip, be fully in the moment when interacting virtually. Do not do something else. It's important. Number four, practice being mindful. Remember, you don't see your students, so make sure that they're all listening and that you can still monitor them even if they're only attending the class online. Number five, Learn to utilize all the possible ways to communicate with your students. So what are these ways? Messenger, email, chat box, and many more. And then, number six, it's make sure to relay clear and concise messages. That's very important because you don't see them face to face. So make sure that when you are going to send them a message, it will be clearly understood. Number seven, make your PowerPoint presentations Short and simple but easy to understand. Just like the examples that I have. Give you this one as a reminder. So even if we are being challenged with the use of technology in teaching online, remember this. Technology is just a tool in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them. The teacher is the most important. So even if we are using technology, please make sure that you are still the most important part of teaching and learning. That's according to Bill Gates. Another one, according to George Carus, technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. May I repeat that? Technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. So meaning to say we have to embrace the use of technology in teaching. We were not trained to be online teachers. However, we do not have a choice but to embrace the new normal way of teaching. So teachers, 
Enjoy online teaching. Embrace the challenge. We can do it. Technology is important, but we are more important than technology if we know how to make use of it in teaching. Isn't it beautiful that in the hands of a great teacher, we can still make use of technology to be our partner in teaching? Okay, so that's it. Happy teaching! Embrace the normal, new normal way of communicating with your students, normal way of teaching our students, teachers. We still have to love teaching even if it's done online. We can all do it. Kaya natin to. Okay? Even if you were not trained to be online teachers, we can survive this challenge. Okay? So again, this is Dr. Debbie Javier telling you to always be a blessing to others. Bye!